Hello and welcome. My name is Sevelo Jovtenko and I'm happy to greet you to my YouTube channel where I talk about Nikon gear and nature filming stuff around me. So today this video will be dedicated to the review of uh, Nikon Z 400mm f 4.5 s lens and um, this is my longest uh, telephoto lens and an upgrade from 70 to 300 mil Nikon F which was adapted uh, to my Nikon Z lens um, my longest telephoto and my brightest telephoto and um, if you have previously seen uh, my unboxing video uh, thumbs up to you <laughs> but if you haven't please check that out uh, because I have some initial thoughts and impressions. Uh, now I'm going to pre present you with my more in-depth review because I had spent with this lens more than a month, uh, had tested it in different situations, uh, nature photography and a lot of uh, football photography uh, for my son, his uh, football team. have some conclusions uh, to make. And this review will have several parts. First of uh, them will be dedicated to uh, the lens exterior build and functionality. The second one will be about its handling. And I will finish you with uh, presenting some of image and video samples depicting how it optically performs. And little spoiler, um, its optical performance is top notch. And I'm using Nikon Z6, which is only 24 megapixel uh, camera full frame, which is plenty enough for uh, my usual stuff like travel photography and na nature photography and family photography and it is slightly low resolution compared to like Nikon Z9 or Nikon Z7 so most of lenses will have a very excellent performance because uh, they are designed to perform good on high megapixel cameras and uh, to be honest, they out-resolve anything which uh, this uh, sensor can see. Um, let's proceed uh, to the, our first uh, part of the review, is uh, the exterior thing and build, and uh, next from that we'll go to handling. Uh, first of all, the lens is uh, fairly light, and um, it has a special lock on the uh, hood itself. To detach it and uh, this hood could be attached in uh, two positions there is a guiding uh, dot on the hood which you should align with the lens in its vertical position yes here And um, it took me some time because uh, my lens foot is not properly aligned uh, for carrying purposes. So <laughs> I need to find uh, at which spot. Uh, when you're uh, holding in on the camera, it's not uh, that complicated. And I like about this hood that it couldn't be detached um, like accidentally. But for all other my Nikon lenses, uh, the hoods are locking without the special release knob and never had an issue. But more security is better. Uh, this hood is uh, very useful not just to combat the uh, flares from shooting into the uh, bright objects uh, but uh, for just uh, having comfort of using it lens in the field because um, having uh, the, the hood attached uh, this super thick uh, rubber ring allows you to put it on any surface and uh, not be worrying that uh, you will damage the lens in any way. Uh, but to continue my review, I'll just remove uh, the hood. There is also a very thin uh, rubber lip around the lens, so you basically could put it on the table without worrying uh, for further damage or any insecurities to, to your lens. Uh, it has a rubberized uh, ring which is not rotating just for the grip purposes. It has uh, the function ring, which you can assign some separate functions uh, in addition to your FN1 and FF2 buttons. Um, quite useful. Uh, for example, changing the shutter speed uh, on this would be nice. Uh, but usually I'm working in the mold with a fixed uh, shutter speed. 
and um, or maybe focus uh, selection uh, this is more useful because uh, thumbling with the uh, buttons and um, wheels on the camera is more um, uh, not, not as, uh, as quick when you are holding all your fingers on the F, A phone and uh, trigger button. And this wide uh, ring is a focus ring, uh, very well damped and easy to roll because uh, this function ring is uh, much more tight and you need to apply some significant, significant force uh, to rotate it, so you wouldn't bump it accidentally. I wouldn't say that you could bump accidentally the focus ring, uh, but uh, with handling the lens it's much easier because it is much wider. Also we have some memory set buttons and additional uh, FN1 and FN2 mm, buttons on the lens. And only two switches, uh, auto focus and manual focus. And uh, the lens uh, focus uh, distance limiter 6 meters to infinity and full. Um, 6 meters to infinity is very useful when you are knowing the subjects won't come close, like in sports or in photographing birds out uh, in the water, uh, because they are not uh, swimming <laughs> towards you. Uh, but when you are working in the forest and want to shoot some birds which can could possibly fly close, uh, this would better to put it into the full position and uh, not be in the situation when the birds uh, fly close and you cannot focus. Um, actually the close focus uh, of this lens is um, not, uh, not great. Uh, it's not suitable for quasi macro work as 100 to 400. Um, but um, um, I won't use it lens for, for that. So it is not as versatile. And uh, Commonly, F-mount uh, Nikon lenses had a lot of more switches and, for example, the vibration reduction mode could be changed in the camera and it is very handy because I uh, set it uh, differently to different modes. For example, for my shot, fast shutter speed uh, mode setting, I have this VR turned off because it is said that uh, some uh, shutter speeds higher than uh, one five hundredths of the second uh, VR can sometimes uh, make glitchy images. Uh, that's why on fast shutter speeds I am not using VR and also I conserve some energy of the camera. But on uh, slower shutter speeds VR is uh, turned on if the mode is for aperture priority with uh, slower sh shutter speeds. Okay, 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 um, the build. Lastly we have uh, the um, uh, color with the foot. First of all, uh, you can put it in any position. It doesn't have any uh, uh, clicky stops. Ah, this thing is rattle. Um, but it is very, fairly easy to put it into proper 90 degrees uh, angles. I never had any problem with the with thing that it doesn't have any stops. And uh, this lens foot can be removed. You need to untie it this uh, bolt and press uh, the small button here and the foot can be removed uh, but uh, what I found out it is not comfortable using this lens without the foot I, I tried it once and was very disappointed because uh, this foot doubles as a very comfortable handle and uh, to use it on my monopod and tripod with the Arca Swiss uh, head I bought a plate uh, with two um, screws. Absolutely, I recommend buying with the two screws uh, because first of all, it's more safe because one screw can get loose and it happened to me once uh, during a long football session like in third hour of shooting one of them got loose and I need to tighten. And you see those have uh, this uh, half rings which allows you to tighten without any tools needed. So very convenient. And secondly, having two screws allows you to be sure that lens uh, will not screw it uh, like losing itself when you have only one because uh, also what I do uh, shooting with the monopod primarily I have it mounted uh, with a ball head sideways and uh, this force will, uh, un will um, loosen the screw and uh, having only one screw loosened 
puts students in much more danger. And it happened very fast, uh, like in half an hour of walking. So when I didn't have this long plate and I needed to test it with having the Arco Swiss. Uh, the Nikon uh, plate itself, foot itself, doesn't have Arco Swiss, uh, this dovetail type uh, grooves. Um, but I don't find it as... Uh, I don't find it as a nuance because I think it is um, too short for the handling. So it is long enough to be attached to the uh, head and be well balanced because uh, the balance point is somewhere near the uh, middle of the foot. So not on the uh, any of the ends with my Nikon Z6. So maybe Nikon Z9, which is a heavier lens, uh, the balance need to be moved. A little bit closer to the camera to be more balanced but with the Nikon Z6 the balance is around the middle of the foot and um, uh, the foot itself is long enough but uh, it is too short uh, to be comfortably handling because uh, as you can see like only three fingers can be put and what I what I like to do with having this uh, attachment is to put three fingers here and one my pinky here and so I have a more secure grip because fingers cannot easily slide off because they are locked here. And it is super comfortable to carry a camera around like this without straining the attachment uh, to the, the bayonet, the attachment to the camera itself. It's uh, wide enough and even I had experience using it with the gloves in, in more cold weather it is even better because uh, you have more space and my hands are pretty medium to small smallish <laughs> so they are not uh, big but space is not much here because you are not gripping like this you are gripping like this and uh, your fingers are bent and all the replacement feet i saw um, there are a lot of complaints that they are more narrow and you cannot put your fingers here and they uh, mm, they are not, not as long enough without pro providing you this uh, great support. And um, they are stupidly expensive for what they are, I think. So better to put uh, like this uh, 15, 20, 10 dollar, I don't remember, a plate. Um, it doesn't add any significant and, how to say, um, any way that you would uh, feel. Um, but. Uh, you will have more comfort and have uh, uh, enough space to carry it comfortably. Um, so that's about the build and the last thing I was uh, very vocal about in my unboxing and I need to reiterate, it doesn't have any uh, uh, lag points, I don't know how to say, uh, things, uh, loops, hooks or something to attach your uh, strap. For example, I'm using those uh, how they called anchors from the Peak Design uh, for my strap. Here's here is my white strap. Um, but what I found out, it is not as critical because the lens is super light and Nikon Z uh, Z6 is super light also. So carrying like this on your relaxed hand is. Um, possible without any um, any discomfort for several hours but if I had to do it like more than two hours I would prefer to have the strap and I am thinking I will figure out maybe putting some um, loops of any kind of fabric or um, rope uh, inside this uh, portion of the feet and then looping to the loop <laughs> the anchor itself. Uh, to have uh, one anchor on the lens, another on the camera, and carrying it uh, on the side. Uh, as I said, the lens itself is very light and it doesn't strain a lot uh, the, mm, the bayonet of the Nikon. So this that's how we ended up <laughs> take, take it, uh, talking about uh, the lens uh, build and the handling itself. Um, so very comfortable and um, good to carry around like this and to take pictures like this. Uh, I didn't use much uh, of the uh, fan buttons and um, this uh, function ring uh, because I usually shooting in 
scenarios where I have the proper um, proper settings uh, predefined. So either it is uh, fast uh, shutter speed for moving subjects or it's uh, aperture priority mode for not moving uh, subject for more stationary. Um, and I think we can uh, proceed to the next section about the optical performance. Um, first of all, it is exceptionally good lens in all regards uh, towards the lens sharpness, uh, the flare, uh, the bokeh, uh, the fringing, uh, color fringing. So I will provide some video and photo samples in the end for you to see, but a lot of uh, reviewers had said it previously. Um, I had uh, only one scenario when I need to close uh, the aperture down, not shooting wide open. <laughs> and it was not for sharpness, basically. It was for getting more depth of field when I shoot in moon. So at infinity, uh, the moon is uh, that big uh, that uh, you cannot uh, have it in focus uh, with the f4.5, f not even the whole moon, but the significant portion of the moon uh, to have it um, in, in focus sharp and uh, be able to show it uh, <laughs> to people. So I need to close it, I don't remember, f5.6 or f8 uh, to get a greater depth of field to, <laughs> to encompass a bigger part of the moon uh, to have it uh, all the craters and um, the the sides of it uh, in focus uh, to demonstrate it. <laughs> this That was like the only scenario. I also uh, tried it for uh, deep sky object photography without tracking. Um, that was uh, very successful because I uh, prepared a lot with, in terms of how to do it properly and to stack the, those images. I will show it also and I, uh, I was thinking like maybe I could buy the, the star tracker to use it uh, on this lens to have uh, longer exposures because uh, this is quite good to for shooting constellations and uh, shooting uh, some uh, nebulas, big nebulas. Uh, great lens, um, uh, nothing to complain in that regard. Um, yes, uh, the only downside is its uh, limit of the closest focus range, because it doesn't close focus a lot. I don't remember, around 1.5 meters, so it, it wouldn't be a big problem if you're shooting wildlife, uh, but for insect photography it is a big no-no. Uh, but I have a dedicated uh, macro lens <laughs> for that purposes. Uh, but that could be great if it could uh, focus as close as 100-400, uh, because you could uh, shoot birds, then butterflies, uh, dragonflies without uh, changing lens, because I don't have the second camera. Uh, what I think about like uh, for wildlife photography and full frame 24 megapixel camera, it is a bit short. Yes, I have to crop a lot. That's why I'm not going to buy the um, teleconverter. Although everyone says that it is um, like showing no degradation uh, with 1.4 and totally usable with uh, 2x teleconverter. But, 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 I plan uh, to wait until Nikon releases the cropped. Uh, sensor um, Z camera with somewhat better capabilities than current models uh, to have it sticked uh, to that. And also some words uh, regarding uh, the focal lens. It is long enough uh, to shoot um, birds, especially big birds like swans, uh, like uh, water birds, and if the birds are not very shy. Um, it is not uh, long enough to shoot small shy birds. Uh, but if your birds are not afraid of human like in parks, it is uh, plenty enough of the reach. But still, it is enough, um, wide enough, uh, to comfortably track uh, birds in flight uh, high up in the sky. Um, I had a lot of experience of uh, tracking the buzzards, the kestrels, and I think like if this was a 500 mil, it would be still possible, but I had some, I would have some problems with tracking, and if it was like longer 600 or 800 mil, um, I think I would need to develop very, very, very um, precise techniques and use it on the gimbal to track uh, birds in the sky. So my battery died, <laughs> and we need to continue. 
Uh, as I was always saying, um, this is the optimal lens for walk around photography, wildlife. Yes, you can shoot a variety of subjects, be that like bigger animals and bigger birds in flight and on the water surfaces, be it smaller birds near you. Uh, the aperture is fast enough to allow you for super short shutter speeds and somewhat decent uh, background blur. And um, it's lightweight and very comfortable with this uh, handle to carry it around uh, in one hand and super quickly going into the shooting posture. And one or two more things. Um, I found it that it is super comfortable and light enough for wildlife photography to carry and shooting only handhold. And for the sports photography, uh, the monopod is a um, very important support with having the lens uh, mounted to the ball head on the side, having all uh, the axis of freedom needed for, for the sports. And uh, as for the um, protective filter, I decided to not to buy one because um, this uh, lens element front is hidden deeply inside the hood, so I don't, uh, I'm not afraid of it being uh, smeared by my handprints and uh, the uh, branches or anything like grass uh, or water splashes uh, making to the element. And if there is any dust, I can just uh, brush it off. So, thank you for watching it. I hope you like my form of uh, uh, long form speeches. And uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding this lens or any other Nikon gear, I have uh, other reviews on my channel. And you can leave the questions uh, below uh, to this video, and I will try to answer as, uh, as good as I can. <laughs> and um, thank you for watching. Uh, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and we proceed to the final part, the video samples and photo samples. Bye-bye!